Hi, I'm Suresh Venkat on behalf of Lenovo and CNBC TV 18. Welcome to another episode of our series India 3.0 powered by technology. Our topic for today's discussion is what is being called the opportunity divide. Does our much vaunted demographic dividend contain in it a potential time bomb? Is India producing armies of undereducated, underskilled and underemployable people? Can we look beyond the staggering numbers of the demographic dividend and understand the issues of access, education, skills and opportunities? That's the question on today's episode and with me, Dilip Chanoy is currently Managing Director and CEO of the National Skill Development Corporation or the NSDC. The NSDC is a public-private partnership mandated to skill 150 million people in India by 2022 in 20 high-growth sectors and the unorganized segment by fostering private sector investments in training and skill development. We'll also be joined by Mino Handa later on in the show. She's the Director of Corporate Communication and Citizenship for Microsoft in India. So let me start with my first question. Let's start with this so-called opportunity. Gap. Dilip, my first question is for you. What is this opportunity gap? Could you briefly summarize it for us? Well, if you look at what the opportunity gap in the uh, skill space or in the education and employment space is simply this. Uh, by 2022, we, had a, we would have 800 million people in the working age group population, out of which 200 million would be graduates. So the question is, what qualifications or what skills will the other 500 million people possess? Let me ask you a, a follow-up question. What skills should they have? If you look at the survey that NSDC did across 22 different high growth sectors, um, in that between 2008 and 2022, they required about 347 million jobs. So each sector, whether it's construction with 33 million, auto with 35 million, or infrastructure with 103 million, or even retail with 14 million, each sector has its own need of skilled people and the opportunity to employ people. And the, the, the challenge is that there are people of that age group, but they don't possess the skills or the knowledge to be able to be employed in that sector. Okay, so hold Dilip Chana, the problem that Ninad just defined of not knowing where the school is, not knowing what the school is, what kind of teachers, here's a problem that technology can play a big, big role in, in monitoring, controlling and tracking what goes on at the primary school level. But somehow technology is not being used for this particular reason. Why? What, what, what's the gap there? You know, the amount of new schools, the amount of classrooms um, that have to be put in place over the next few years just to achieve the outcomes of the Right to Education Act is far in excess of the total money available uh, to actually uh, deliver that. So we need to actually find more means of investment, more money to put into the education sector just to meet the needs of the Right to Education Act. So therefore, it is but uh, you know imperative that we would have to seek uh, private sectors you know uh, role in, in in expanding the uh, number of schools and educational institutions across the chain that we have in India and the way it has to be done and that's where technology comes in because you have to reduce cost you have to improve accessibility you have to in, in, you know improve affordability and with all of this some of the traditional norms that we had in terms of student teacher ratios in terms of classroom sizes in terms of attendance all these will have to be addressed through technology and the interesting part is technology exists but we have not yet integrated it into the classroom of today. We are kind of using 19th century education uh, type of technology to meet the needs of the 21st century. So Ritu, we have a 19th century class. Dilip Chana, why can't we build an IIM for teaching and who is going to teach the teachers? That is the question for you. No, you, you already have the National Council for Teacher Education. I think that the body itself had certain problems, so the body had to be recast, redone, etc. But I think the challenge is, is, is a little more than that. I think it, 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 it relates to the way education is kind of structured. Because today, this is perhaps one of the very few sectors where, you know, if I were to use not a word which one typically uses, it's still one of those sectors which have not been fully liberalized and where still there's a lot of government control and government uh, regulation. So, you know, if, if the government were to look at a different role and were to say, 
we would move to empowering the the students and the parents to choose the best schools uh, through uh, giving you know let's say vouchers or other types of financial institutions rather than financing the education system itself then perhaps you would set in place a kind of a ecosystem that will enable or that will force uh, you know schools to improve and dilip chennai thank you very much for joining us on this discussion on the opportunity gap